So up until a few years ago, I used pace to guide every single run that I was doing. Even in 2017, when I had my breakthrough marathon at Twin Cities, the training leading up to that included a lot of easy running because I finally learned that you were supposed to be doing easy running, but I was still using pace to guide those easy runs. And I would actually get really frustrated with myself if I was not hitting a certain pace for those easy runs. And that, my friends, is really not easy running. This is not to say that pace does not have a place in your training, it absolutely does. But if that's all you're ever paying attention to, chances are you have a lot of opportunity to become a stronger and faster runner while avoiding injury. So here's a breakdown of training by rate of perceived exertion, heart rate, and pace and how you can use each of those three by really understanding the strengths of each of them, the weaknesses of each of them, and which one to use at the best time to maximize your training. So the first one is rate of perceived exertion or RPE. You'll also hear this referred to as running by feel. I like to use the one to 10 scale. So one being like very minimal effort walking to the kitchen to grab a snack and 10 being that maximum all out effort like a sprint or the end of a marathon race. You're really not looking at any metrics at all. You are completely paying attention to the signs of your body. You could also be doing things like listening to your breath, doing a talk test to determine what kind of effort that you're putting out. But ultimately, this is just feeling out the signals of your body and determining how fast or how slow you're going to run based on that. So what are the strengths of using RPE? It is highly adaptable to external factors like if there's hills or bad weather. It allows you to really tune into how you feel and make adjustments completely based on effort. And really it's all your body knows is effort. And so you're really just allowing your body to make the adaptations that it needs at the right time. It's great for beginners who don't yet have any pace references. And the biggest one that I think is so important is it keeps the ego out of your running because you literally can't look at any other metric or know what your pace is, what your heart rate is. You're truly just having to tap into how your body feels. The weakness of RPE are small, but it can be subjective. It really takes time to hone this in. Like, is that a seven or is that an eight? It can be really hard to know. The good thing though with RPE is we're not looking for perfection here. We're just needing to be in the ballpark. Another weakness is, is it can be hard if you're only running by effort when you get to race day and you're not really sure what pace you should be running, but it can be certainly valuable to learn to race by effort as well. It's just that most people are wanting to have a better understanding of pace when they get to race day, and that's totally understandable. So next one we're talking about is training by heart rate. So we're really talking about looking at your heart rate during a cardiovascular activity. So you could be anywhere from that zone one all the way up to zone five. So the strengths of training by heart rate, it's objective and easily measured with a heart rate monitor. And as long as you are using the correct device that measures well, it's not lying to you. It also provides a really good gauge of overall effort. And so it helps you know, are you training in the right zone that you're supposed to be in? It's helpful for monitoring recovery running and avoiding overtraining, making sure that you are really staying in that zone one, zone two at the right times. It avoids an athlete's ego getting in the way and forcing too fast of a pace, which I find happens very often when I have a runner that's very fixated on pace. They are often going too fast for their easy runs, which is where the majority of your time should be spent with your running if you are looking to improve. And another good strength is that it carries over well to other modalities. So zone two is zone two, no matter what cardiovascular activity you're doing. And so that's really helpful if you're not just running, but if you're also incorporating something like cycling or swimming, etc. 
Now, when you hear zone two, if you're like, I've heard a lot about that, but I don't really understand that, zone two is going to be the next video that I record. So if you want more information on that and wanna have an understanding of how learning to run in zone two can make you a faster runner, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and that you have notifications on by hitting that little bell. And if you are watching this, once I've already made that video, I will make sure that it is linked below. So the weaknesses of heart rate training, you have to have a tool that will effectively measure heart rate. So I see this as a big problem is that a lot of people want to be measuring heart rate, but they're using their wrist-based device and it's really just not accurate day to day. And so you are really at the mercy of the device that you are using. So if you are going to be using heart rate, make sure that you have a great tool. I recommend a chest strap. I will put a link below to the one that I use. And so if you wanna be measuring by heart rate, you've got to make sure that you have a, the right tool. Another weakness is it requires understanding of what your training zones are, which leads into the next weakness. And that is that you also have to have a very good understanding of what your max heart rate is. Um, 220 minus your age is a good starting point, but it's not perfect and it's not great for everyone. And so if you can truly do a max heart rate test, whether through running or in a lab, that will allow you to actually pinpoint correct zones and you know that you are then training correctly. Running by heart rate can also be really challenging for newer runners um, because if you're brand new to running, any running that you do is going to spike your heart rate and get you out of that zone two. And it also can be really frustrating to be constantly looking at that happening. And so for the newer runners, I just recommend that they really are going by feel initially and aren't worrying about what that heart rate is. So next let's talk about pace. Obviously pace is measuring the speed at which you are running, usually measured in minutes per mile or minutes per kilometer. So the strengths of running by pace is it's really easy to track with a GPS watch or an accurate treadmill if you're indoors. It's really useful for specific speed workouts like intervals, tempo runs, and specific pace for your upcoming race and it provides a clear measure of progress over time. So for example, if you see that your race times are getting faster and those paces within that race are getting faster, then that's clearly showing that you are improving. You can also look at your paces after the fact. I don't want you looking at it during an easy run, but you can look at, at it after the fact of an easy run, match that up to how you feel, match that up to heart rate. And if you see that those paces are getting faster in your easy runs over over time at the same effort level, then obviously that's a clear sign that you are improving. The weaknesses with using pace, it's just not as adaptable as rate of perceived exertion or heart rate. So if you are running on hilly terrain or it's really hot outside and you're trying to maintain the same pace, your effort level on those is actually much higher. So in those circumstances, you could be completely changing a workout by trying to hit a certain pace because if you are used to always having your easy pace be a certain pace, which this is exactly why you shouldn't be looking at pace when you're easy running. But if you're doing that, you're trying to keep that same easy pace that you normally have and you're on a hilly route or it's really hot outside, it's definitely not your easy pace anymore and you're actually changing the intention of the workout. Another weakness is that it can just really put your ego at the forefront. How we think we're running easy enough when we are not. We've all kind of like determined this time that we've decided is slow for ourselves and obviously pace is all relative to each person. But I think if anyone was being honest, I could ask them and say, what do you think is slow for you? And they would say a certain pace and it can get really frustrating if you are seeing times slower than that, even if it's what your body needs and people think that they're not going to get faster if they run slower than that pace, which is actually not true. And that's when I finally saw a breakthrough in my running when I really just let that pace go out the window and I let myself run as slow as I needed on those easy days. So the big question now is when do you use each of these to maximize your training? So rate of perceived exertion is best for recovery and easy runs, mixed terrain or bad weather days, fartlek sessions, or it's really great for doing run, walk, um, guiding when to take those walk intervals. 
When is it best to use heart rate? This is mostly best for easy running and overall monitoring your intensity. It's also really valuable for anyone who has a clear understanding of their heart rate zones. So you can actually train in zones versus pace if you are very skilled in that. However, I find that most runners aren't really taking the full amount of time you need to have a full understanding of how to train that way. So working with a coach in this way can be really valuable or at a minimum, it's incredibly valuable to understand at least what zone two is, where is that mark for you and making sure that you are keeping your easy runs under that mark. And I see so many huge improvements from runners when they start training in this way. And lastly, pace, like we said, it absolutely has a place in your training. It is best for specific speed workouts, tracking your progress and racing. And definitely if you have a big race coming up, pace is great for locking in your pacing strategy and knowing what you can handle on race day. So here's the pro tip, guys. I am all about using all of these metrics in triangulation in your training. So yes, I want you to combine each of these metrics so that you basically become a pro at using all three of them at the right time. Combining these metrics can be incredibly powerful and I feel very strongly that when you start being really skilled in using each of them, you're really going to see your running start to level up. So if the thought of putting this together sounds overwhelming to you, I get it, I've been in your shoes, and you feel like you want someone to guide you because your running goals are really important to you, we are here to help you at the Ready, Set, Marathon team as coaches. So I will go ahead and put our coaching link below so you can learn more. Please reach out and ask questions if you are interested in learning more about coaching and how we can help you. As always, guys, thanks so much for joining me, and I'll catch you in the next one.